On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to be taking a look at a discovery of astronomical proportions. We have the man who made the discovery with us on today's program. It's going to be about the lunar and solar eclipses in the year 2015, the sabbatical year 2015. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me and with our guest this fascinating subject. Gary, introduce our guest, please. Be glad to, Jr. Today, signs in the heavens, the sun, the moon, and with us, uh, Pastor Mark Biltz, El Shaddai Ministries of Bonnie Lake, Washington. And Mark, welcome to Prophecy in the News. Tell us a little about your work there in Bonnie Lake. Where is Bonnie Lake, and what's your <laughs> congregation like? Sure. Uh, Bonnie Lake is just outside of Tacoma, Washington. It would be the city most people are familiar with. And I started the congregation seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, to teach Hebrew roots to Christians. I just really felt it was important uh, that they had a better understanding of uh, the roots. Uh, we're grafted into a tree and we need to go down to the, the deepest part we can to get uh, the richness of that root. Mm. Uh, we have about 200 people now. Uh, we're doing a Passover Seder this year of over 600 people in the Tacoma Dome. And uh, we're very excited about what God is doing in teaching all of us about Hebrew roots and his feast days. Very good. Well, Jr., I must say, uh, it's knowing where to start today, we, we can talk about so many different things, uh, but you've made an amazing discovery, and it started Fe February 21st, basically. You got an insight at the time of a blood moon, and there's a very famous photo that's been circulating around of a blood moon over the Dome of the Rock, a an eclipse of the moon, a and that proved to be very uh, much a stimulus for your thinking. Yes, it did. I, I was looking at that, and I thought <clears throat> the Bible had talked about how the moon would turn to blood and the sun would turn to sackcloth uh, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And so I thought, well, the plain meaning of the text, it would be a total solar eclipse and a total lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, our government, NASA, the Goddard Space Center, has a website and it lists all of the eclipses for the last like 5,000 years and the next 2,000 years. Because mm -hmm. when God placed the sun, the moon, and the stars in the skies, he's very organized, he's mathematical, yes. uh, very precise and uh, they can determine exactly when they have occurred. So I went to the website. Now, in Genesis 1.14, yes. when God put the stars in the heavens for signs, tell us about <clears throat> the Hebrew word there for the signs. Yes, okay. the, the Hebrew word for signs is ot, and it means a signal, kind of like one if by land, two if by sea. It's mm -hmm. like God wants to signal us, send a signal to us uh -huh. if we're watching the signal. And uh, the Hebrew word implies, if you look it up in your Strong's Concordance, not only is it a signal, but it's a signal for coming or his appearing. Mm -hmm. And the word season, he also said they're not only for signs, but for seasons. Well, when we think seasons in our normal mindset, we're thinking winter, spring, summer, fall. Yes. But the Hebrew word is the moed, which refers directly to the festivals of the Messiah. It literally means a divine appointment. When we hear the word feast, we think food. But the Hebrew word uh, has nothing to do with food. It has to do with a divine appointment, as if God has a day timer. And he says, okay, I'm going to mark the day and the time when I'm going to signal my appearings. Amazing. You know, the idea of the blood moon and the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipses, down through history, many of the ancient profane historians, I say profane because they're not religious, okay? I'm talking about Roman <coughs> historians, sure. Greek historians, uh, when a general goes out with his troops to war, there are oftentimes written in the, in the history of this world, on a certain day there was a solar, solar eclipse, the sun turned dark, and a certain night there was a blood moon when the moon went out. And these help mark, these are time markers that help historians to find out when those particular events took place. For example, Flavius Josephus said that shortly after um, uh, Herod was ill, uh, some Jews got up on the temple door and pulled down the golden eagle and chopped mm -hmm. it to pieces. Well, mm -hmm. Herod was so angry, he had these men burned at the stake. And that night, there was a solar eclipse over Jerusalem. So, you know, this is really fascinating that these are time markers historically and have historically been used in, 
in historical writings that, uh, that they are very significant. Definitely. Now, I want us to go to the year 2014-2015 for the first set of eclipses because uh, there are four lunar eclipses and two solar eclipses in that one year. And they just happen to be on Jewish holy days. So let's go, for example, to these heavenly signs and look at them here. The sabbatical year of 2014-2015. It begins on September 25th, 2014, in September 13th, 2015. And the first that we want to see are a series of four lunar eclipses. And we have the lunar eclipse there of one of them. As you can see, I've speeded up the, the movie there from our uh, astronomy program in the computer. You see it, how it's turned uh, blood red. Now it says Passover, April 15, 2014. Tabernacles, October 8, 2014. Then the following Passover, April 4, 2015. The following Tabernacles, September 28, 2015. Tell us about that. Well, what's fascinating is when you look at the Gregorian calendar, you see April 15th, October 8th, April 4th, September 28th. You don't see a pattern. But on the biblical calendar, the Passover is the same day. Sukkot is the same day. Yes. And so God uh, wants us to look at the biblical calendar. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to be watching. The reason we need to be watching is so we know he will signal his appearing. But we have to know what to be watching as well. And so we mm -hmm. need to be watching the biblical holidays. So Passover occurs on a full moon. Yes. And naturally it has to be, the moon has to be on a full moon for the shadow of the earth to come between the uh, moon and the sun and create this sh shadow across the surface of the moon. And we just happen to have that in uh, Passover in the year 2015. Now that is a sabbatical year, it's seven years from now. Okay. Yes. Uh, we also had this on the Feast of Tabernacles, which is Tishri 15 in the autumn, um, the full moon following the new moon of September or Rosh Hashanah. Yes. So on Tishri 15, there is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot, as it's called in Hebrew. Yes. And we have another solar eclipse. That's in 2014. Then the following year, 2015, and by the way, Rosh Hashanah 2014 begins the sabbatical year. Yes, yes. Because, you know, Correct. it takes two of, our, two of our numberings to find one 12-month period because the Jewish New Year begins with the new moon of September and uh, goes for three months into our next year and then nine months of that year. Right. So when we say it begins in 2014, ends in 2015, it's, we're talking 12 months. Okay? One year. But... We have the Passover and Feast of Tabernacles eclipse in 2014, and then in 2015, we have the same thing all over again. Now, how often does that happen in history? I'm glad you asked that. That doesn't happen that often in history. When I went to the government's website, they said uh, on there, any of you can go there, that when you have four total blood red moons back to back, is called a tetrad. And some centuries, for 400 years, there were no tetrads. Uh, this didn't happen at all. And so I looked to see in this century how many tetrads there were. And there were six or seven, but what's interesting, the only one that it happens on the four biblical holidays mm -hmm. is 2014, 2015. It doesn't happen again. In this century, you were gonna find four blood red moons on the biblical holiday. So mm. the fact that it doesn't happen again in this century, I think mm -hmm. is very significant. Uh, so then I looked at last century, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, the last time that four blood red moons occurred together was in 1967 and 1968, <laughs> tied to wow. Jerusalem recaptured uh, by the Israel. The Six Day War, isn't that amazing, Gary? Well, that's more than amazing. <laughs> now. What we have here, and, and don't be confused, this is really simpler than it sounds. Uh, the Lord seems to be marking yes. dates yes. with 
signs. And now Mark talked about signs a minute ago. And in a moment, I'm going to turn mm -hmm. him loose and let him talk about watching for the coming of the Lord because he's got a lot to say about that. But Mark, uh, let's just review. The Lord seems to be like pointing a finger at significant dates and you think you've found a pattern. Tell us about the pattern. Well, as far as the pattern, uh, what's significant to me is that even before 1967, the next time that you had four blood red moons again was right after Israel became a nation in 48. Wow. It happened again in 1949 and 1950. And we're talking about on Passover on, and... On uh, Passover and Sukkot. And Sukkot. Wow. And then you didn't have any astronomical tetrads in the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1600s. In the 1500s, there were six, but none of those fell on Passover and Sukkot. Hmm. The next time it fell again on Passover and Sukkot, if you remember in 1492, when yes. Columbus sailed the ocean blue mm -hmm. on the 9th of Av, a very significant date in Jewish history, when all the Jews were kicked out of Spain, it was 1493 and 1494 when you had these blood red moons. On Passover. On Passover at Sukkot. So wow. each time they happened, it was tied to the Jewish people. I, and, and I feel like interjecting here because Passover begin, is the first of the seven feasts of Israel. Sukkot is the seventh of the seven feasts of Israel. J.R., what we have here is like a parenthesis around mm -hmm. the beginning and the end of the festival cycle. And, and at each point, it's marked by a distinct astronomical occurrence. Yeah. Now, that's a sign. That's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Now, if you're getting confused with all of this talk, <laughs> I want you to know it's going to be in our May magazine. Be sure and get the May edition of Prophecy in the News magazine, and you'll be able to read all about this. Not only that, but in the May magazine, I have an article on the conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn throughout the past 6,000 years of human history. 303 conjunctions, 36 of them were triple conjunctions. And I'll tell you all about how they fit the biblical historical events. Mm. And so these two articles on the heavenly signs are going to be something you'll want to keep. You'll want to read over and over and study. Gary, mm -hmm. let's hear some scriptures on when the sun turns dark and the moon turns to blood, what does Jesus have to say about well, some Well, Jesus, of that? in Matthew 24, the, the Olivet Discourse, was talking to the disciples, and he, he made this statement. He said, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And at that point, and let me just stop, when we think of the sun being darkened, the moon not giving her light, we usually think of some astronomical catastrophe, perhaps the sun sputtering yeah. and, and the moon uh, being affected by all this. But maybe it's time to rethink this a little bit and think of it as a natural cycle, the mm -hmm. cycle of the eclipses. Uh, and this is exactly what you've done, Mark. Well, according to Mark here, we have um, when Israel was born in 1948, these four blood moons in Passover and Sukkot. And in 1967, when Jerusalem was taken mm -hmm. and liberated, uh, the Temple Mount liberated, we had the four blood moons. Mm -hmm. This has got to be a pattern. So when we have in the next, at the end of this coming sabbatical cycle in the year 2014, 2015, in the sabbatical year, that's at the seventh year of the cycle, yes. we have these four blood moons. It's just phenomenal. Well, what's amazing to me is not, when I saw that, I thought, well, hey, now wait a minute. You know, scripture, you know, it's not an error. I got to look. And is there any solar eclipses? Because it said that the sun would turn dark. Okay. So I went to NASA's website and looked at the solar eclipses. And sure enough, there's a solar eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I went back and there's a total solar eclipse on Adar 29 and Nisan 1, uh, right in there at that date. And the reason why that's so significant is because Nisan 1 is the beginning of the religious calendar, mm -hmm. Passover two weeks later. Yes. And, Adar tw and Nisan 1 is when Moses set up the tabernacle, that's when the glory of God fell. Mm -hmm. And so Adar 29 is an ending of the religious calendar kind of like okay. a new season. And so on Adar 29, leading into Nisan 1, you have a total solar eclipse wow. beginning the religious year. Okay, let's look at it on the screen here. We have the total, total solar eclipses on Nisan 1. Yes. 
are on ADAR 29, Nissan yeah. 1. Actually, Nissan 1 begins at sundown, right. and ADAR 29 is during the day. Yes. And the sun, has, we have to be able to see it, so it has to happen during the daytime. And then, of course, the following Tishri 1, 2015, uh, six months <coughs> later, and, uh, you know, that, that Tishri 1 there is Rosh Hashanah, the yes. Jewish New year yes and there is a solar eclipse now that solar eclipse is not a total right solar eclipse it's a partial eclipse nevertheless it's still of astronomical significance but i want you to notice here i've had this animation running and we see what it looks like in a, so a total solar eclipse you see the corona around the moon there that's right. sitting directly the over the sun mm -hmm. now this we're going to see in 2015, on the first day of the first month, and again on the first day of the seventh month, exactly. which is the Jewish New Year. Mm -hmm. And that concludes, it is, it is Tishri 1 that concludes the sabbatical year. Yes. Wow. Yes. And, and so it's, you, yeah. And it's time for the Messiah to show up, right? <laughs> yes. Well, to think okay. you have the religious year beginning with the total solar eclipse, mm -hmm. two weeks later, a total lunar eclipse on Passover, mm -hmm. and then the a civil year beginning with the solar eclipse, mm -hmm. followed two weeks later by another total blood red moon <laughs> on the Feast of Sukkot, wow. all in 2015. Well, now, if you think that this is a coincidence. <laughs> right. I want you to know <laughs> that it's timed, you know? Oh, you can go into a computer astronomy program and go back in history and forward in history, and there are no more of these for the rest of the century. That's right. It doesn't happen again. It does not happen again on the biblical holidays. Now, there are three more solar eclipses that you need to know about. And one of them happens this year. Tell us about them. Well, yeah, what's fascinating is, as Gary read, if these events happen, it says in Matthew and in Luke, at the end of the tribulation, mm -hmm. and if that's 2015, you back off seven years, that puts 2008 as a very critical year. Yes. And beginning this year, there's a total solar eclipse, only one. Next year, there's only one. And the next year, there's only one. But they all fall like a bullseye right on the first of Av, or the 29th of Tammuz. Yes. And for the Christians, many aren't aware of the significance of that date because we haven't been watching the biblical calendar. But the 17th of Tammuz is when they worshiped the golden calf. Yes. It's also when Nebuchadnezzar broke through the, the walls of Jerusalem. Of Jerusalem. Wow. And by the way, it's also the same day the Lebanon War started two years ago. Uh -huh. The missiles went through the northern border of Israel the same day Nebuchadnezzar broke through the walls. Yeah. Well, well, Mark, I have to just, you know, I, this is exciting, folks. This is amazing. I, I, the thing that, that grabs me as you're talking about this <laughs> is the very simple fact that Av is called the dark time in the Hebrew calendar. Yes. In fact, there is a period of three weeks during that time, referred to mm -hmm. as the dark time. And you're saying that this eclipse falls uh, at that period of time. Not, Where just, not just any time during that period, but on of the first. Of the first. The first day mm -hmm. of of. Wow. That's when the Jews really get serious about lamenting the destruction of the temple. They don't <clears throat> bathe, they don't shave, they don't put on fresh, clean clothes. They take their shoes off, turn the chairs upside down, sit on the uh, upturned chair. They don't even, they want no comfort during those nine days from the first to the ninth of mm. Av. That's right. Wow. The, the reason why historically it was on the ninth of Av that the 10 spies brought the bad report and didn't want the land. They despised it. Because of that, that day has been cursed in Jewish history. Mm. When Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple, it was on the 9th of Av. Yes. And 600 years later, when Rome destroyed the temple, it was on the same day, the 9th of Av. Yes. All the Jews were kicked out of England in 1290 on the 9th of Av. Mm -hmm. All the Jews were kicked out of Spain in 1492 on the 9th of Av. Yes. World War I started on the 9th of Av. Hitler's proclamation to kill the Jews was on the 9th <laughs> of Av. And they evacuated the Gaza Strip at sunset on the 9th of Av, the wow. same day they rejected the land. 3,500 years ago. And so it's known as the Dire Straits. Mm -hmm. And on the first of Tammuz is right, first of Av, 
uh, is right in the middle of those dire straits. We have these solar eclipses three yeah. years in a row. Wow. Uh, tell us the significance in Jewish <clears throat> writings about what a solar eclipse stands for and what the lunar eclipse stands for. Yes, and this is very fascinating. Uh, first off, Zechariah 8.19 is a very key verse because it mentions these four fast days. And uh, in Jewish writings, a uh, blood red moon bads bode for Israel, but a total solar eclipse means bad news for the nations. Mm -hmm. The Gentile The nations. Gentile nations. And in Zechariah 8.19, in the context of these fast days, God says he's going to turn these fasting days into days of great joy. In other words, the nations are going to be judged during that time. Mm. And so here, right in the middle, mm. for the next three years, we see judgment coming upon the nations by having this total solar eclipse right in the midst. Oh, wow. Now, please understand, there's coming a solar eclipse this summer on the 1st of Av. July 31st, August 1st, right in there. Okay. And then next year, there'll be another one on the first of Av. And the next year, another one on the first of Av. That sounds really significant because we're right in the middle of the dark time and we're going to have a dark sun. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> the yes. sun's going to be eclipsed. So this is, this is mind blowing. This is really mind blowing. Please understand that this is a sabbatical year. The next seven-year cycle begins this coming September 29th with the new moon of September, Rosh Hashanah. And will run for seven years. Could this be Daniel's 70th week? It's possible. We can't tell you that it will be, but listen, if the world goes to war, ha, then we'll know. We will know, right? <coughs> I think uh, I, there's a good chance there will be a war this summer. Uh, to me, it's, it's the whole insanity of dividing Jerusalem and dividing the land as well. If they try to divide Jerusalem and create a Palestinian state, uh, to me, that is really going to be the trigger. Uh, and we need to be watching and know the church is commanded to watch. Absolutely. And I want to say that we're watching. As a matter of fact, we're watching Hezbollah dug into the southern slopes of Lebanon with 40,000 rockets, JR. Yes. These are high-tech rockets that can reach all the way to southern Israel, and they yes. promise uh, in the very near future to eliminate Israel, to annihilate Israel. Now, we yeah. know that's not going to happen. I read last week that the Israeli government is reissuing the gas masks because yes. of the possibility of chemical uh, weapons being on the tips of these rockets. That's right. Ab in April, the gas masks were uh, yeah. reissued. And we're also watching our president say that he wants a Palestinian state by the end of this year. Exactly. Pressure is, is on Israel is from, from several different directions, Mark, and, and that eclipse stands right in the middle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> and uh, the church needs to be aware that uh, we're supposed to be reading the signs of the times. We're not supposed to be dead. We're not supposed yes. to be asleep. But we're supposed to be watching because he's not to come to us as a thief in the night. Mm. And we may not be able to set a date, but we can be watching. I think you said something like, uh, like a tornado watch. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's a, uh, I'm from Kansas, and we're in Oklahoma, and people are familiar with tornadoes. There's watches and warnings. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, a real big watch. We need to, yeah. the conditions are very favorable for the tribulation yes. to begin this fall, and I we like need that. to be watching. So we're not issuing a warning. We're right. just issuing a watch. Exactly. Tribulation watch. How about a tribulation that? watch, as a matter of fact. But, J.R., we've been doing this for years, and the Lord ha has commended those in Scripture all the way through the Bible. Those who are found to be faithful uh, watchmen are yes. always commended. When the thief in the night came, the one who was watching was not caught off guard, was he? <laughs> That's true. Hey, you know, J.R., we're coming to the end of a, of a program, and, and we have so much to say regarding uh, the signs in the heavens, which Mark talked about, and the, the act of watching. Uh, there is so much to say about that, and on our next broadcast, we're going to get into it in real depth. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to trust Him today. He alone can give you eternal life. He came 2,000 years ago and died on Passover as the Passover lamb. 
and we're going to have a blood moon coming up on uh, Passover <laughs> in 2014, again in 2015. It just seems like the Lord who came the first time to save the world is coming back to raise the dead. He promises that He's coming. We are looking for the rapture and the resurrection. And at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, Jesus is coming back in power and great glory. He's going to come to Jerusalem. And when he, when he gets there in chapter 20 of Revelation, He raises the dead. Do you want to be in the resurrection? I tell you, this is the blessed hope. This is the hope of the ages. If you want to, if you want to be raised one day, raised to eternal life, trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ask Him to forgive you. Tell Him you know you're a sinner and you're sorry. Ask Him to forgive you and save you. It just takes a few moments of prayer. In the sincerity of your heart, repent of your sins and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And one of these days, when the sun goes black and the moon turns to blood, you'll be ready. You'll be there with Jesus. Listen to what Revelation 6 says. He said, When he opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars fell from heaven. So keep looking up, will you? Keep looking up.